Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I've talked before about moving company scams. I've even had clients of mine contact me who had issues with moving companies. And one of the common scams is that you'll call a moving company and they'll say, yeah, we'll move all your stuff and they'll give you a quote. Then they come, they put all the stuff on the trucks, they drive off with it and they go, we got a problem. You go, what's that? And they go, you had more stuff than you told us. Our quote was low and you, you're trying to rip us off. So instead of the quote we gave you, you have to pay us like say twice as much money. And you go, that's insane. I've got a signed contract. They go, well, the signed contract was you know, induced by fraud because you lied to us. You said you only had this much stuff and you actually have this much stuff. And you say, still, I got a signed contract. They say, well, we got your stuff. So if you want us to deliver it, you got to pay us. And that kind of issue arises more often than you care to think. And if you really want to get scared, go on the internet and look up moving company scams and read the stories. And so Neil sent me one. I said, Steve, check this out because this involves somebody finally being called to task for this. CBSnews.com ran it. Marie Saavedra wrote it. Moving company that cost Chicago family virtually everything they owned indicted on federal charges. So here's the thing. Some people say, well, you know, if I was going to hire a moving company, I'd look up their ratings on Yelp. <laughs> I'd look them up on Google, see what kind of ratings. They have five-star ratings? Yeah, yeah. Well, CBS Chicago has reported on this because in a particular case they're talking about, a move gone horribly wrong uh, with one moving company. That company is now facing federal charges for faking its reviews. So now they're taking a closer look at this. Uh, the woman involved in the story uh, whose stuff got lost, and I'll tell you the story in a second, says, it makes me so mad that they kept all of our money for a service they wrecked. She says if she could go back in time, she wouldn't have listened to anything anybody told her. Not the company, not the reviews. And of course, what happened was last year she hired the company to move her parents from Florida to Connecticut. All their things were packed in a rental truck that landed upside down in a creek in Maryland. So they moved their stuff to a creek in Maryland. But you don't want your stuff in a creek. Uh, she said, they assured me that they would have very trusted good vendors that were highly vetted. Decades of memories and personal heirlooms were destroyed after the truck ended up in the creek. And shortly after, so as any belief that she had that the company would try to make it right. Uh, she says there was never any offer of a reimbursement of a penny of a full service charge that I paid for, a service that wasn't only not completed, but was a catastrophe beyond measure. So there was no movement on this for 10 months, and then CBS2 got involved, and as the media gets involved, sometimes things happen. They ran a story back in February where they reported that the company was working on a settlement in the case. But days later, the company said, uh, well, we've got bigger issues to deal with. So the Department of Justice indicted two people in Florida for uh, what they've been accused of is a moving fraud scheme worth over $12 million operating under eight different company names. Federal prosecutors in Pennsylvania said over a span of three years, they'd increase the estimate of their fees. And if customers didn't pay, they'd refuse to deliver their stuff. The indictment also states they created false five-star reviews on their own websites and legitimate review websites like the Better Business Bureau and Yelp. And I know a lot of people who've grown up thinking the Better Business Bureau is almost like a government agency that you can trust 100%. But as pointed out here, they can be gamed also. So TV station asked the Better Business Bureau about that, and they said, we do have safeguards in place, but I have to admit, like every other organization, Amazon and others, that there are fake reviews that get past those safety nets. That's the Better Business Bureau of Chicago president and CEO speaking. He said the organization is alerted when these kinds of indictments come down. <clears throat> then it strips companies of their accreditation, but customer reviews are a different story. So he says, we have the safeguard protections like the organizations uh, and their IP addresses, and the limits from coming from certain computers, but we don't change or modify those, and we don't review them like we do complaints. So that's the trouble. You can do all the internet search you want in the world, and you'll likely find great reviews for these companies. That's been the case with this company. 
who had five-star reviews for them from customers posted even after they were indicted. For example, a website called Move Buddha ranked them as the best overall value on its list of the five best interstate movers. The website said that list is based on research of federal complaint records. Uh, they also found similar reviews on move.org, including glowing anecdotes about stellar service on long-distance moves and pledges to use them again. Meanwhile, on their own website, they had a lot of those same reviews. But of course, now you wonder how many of those are just made up. Now, neither the staff nor the attorney for the moving company answered questions asked of them by the TV station, which leaves you, the customer, with an even more difficult task because people say, do your homework, do research, poke around on the internet, you can find this stuff out. And of course, how do you know if any of it's true? So the question is, what can you do? Uh, if you're looking on the Better Business Bureau's website, note if the company's accredited or not, then widen your Google search so you can find news articles, government reports, or anything else tied to the business that may help you make the best decision. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you said, Steve, list areas of concern for consumers. Where is the biggest risk where you're going to have the hardest time finding somebody and knowing that they're reliable and dependable before you start? I personally think moving is at the top of that list. Because if you go to a car dealership to buy a used car, I talk a lot about used cars. You might say, Steve, what about used cars? The thing about a used car is you can look at it, you can test drive it, you can do research on it, and you know that the research is accurate because it's done by third parties. It may have missed stuff, but they catch a lot of the stuff. You can have a mechanic look at the car. You can do all kinds of stuff before you buy the car. Many people choose not to, but you can. But how do you predict the behavior of somebody you've never met and you're going to entrust everything you own to them practically. And I'm going to tell you right now, in my entire grown-up life, I've only used a professional third-party mover one time. And it was simply because of the situation I was in, where at the time, my, my spouse actually had a company that said, we will pay to move you. And they paid and they hired the moving company. And the moving company they used had a very lucrative arrangement with the company. And therefore, the, the move went perfectly. It went perfectly. But I've heard so many other stories about moving. And also, I know people I can ask to move. <laughs> I've got friends. I've got brothers. And so the last couple of times I've moved, I've made a couple of phone calls and said, guys, I'm getting a big old truck, and I'm going to move. Can you guys help me out? Everybody steps up and does it. Now, I know that not everyone can do that. Not everyone can do that. And so this is a risk that people take. And, and the, the worst thing you can do, the worst thing you can do is to simply go on the Internet, do a search, see somebody pop up, call them and go, yeah, sounds good. Because you realize that all of that, can be, in essence, faked. Meaning that somebody with a good knowledge of how search engines operate can create a website that will draw in the traffic. They have a call center someplace and they hire people who sound good. And it might be that the person who's running this operation is on the other side of the planet. And it could be their business model that their goal is to rip you off. And I've gotten the phone call at my office from somebody who said, Steve, I just moved to Royal Oak, Michigan, or I just moved to Southfield, and they named some local town, and they go, I just moved here from someplace far away, and I have a problem. All my stuff is on a moving truck right now, and they won't unload it till I pay them more money. And I'm like, oh, oh. And I've also told the story before about a friend of mine who hired a moving company who moved all this stuff and unloaded it, and then said, you owe us more money. He goes, no, I don't. They go, okay, and they loaded it all back on the truck. <laughs> now, there's... There's the distinction, because once they moved it and unloaded it at his place, if they had a contractual dispute, that goes to court. It's, o it's only over money. They do not have the right to retake possession of something that they've already surrendered. And I said, uh, do you want me to talk to him or do you want to tell him? 
And he goes, what's that? And I go, tell me you're about to call the police. And say you had all your stuff here, and these people loaded it on a truck and drove off with it. And about a half hour later, he called me back and said, I just got all my stuff back. So there are things you can sometimes do, but the biggest problem you have is that most people feel like they're over a barrel when the company calls says you owe us more money. Now, you could always pay them and then sue them, but one of the other problems that pops up here is quite often these companies are all over the place, but let's suppose that you just moved from Florida to Connecticut and the company you called is actually in, oh, I don't know, Texas. Do you go to Texas and sue them? Can you sue them in Connecticut? Can you sue them in Florida? What about the woman who had the job arranged for her parents? She might not even live in the state that her parents are moving to. And so there's all kinds of weird inconvenience issues you can run into there as well. Obviously, you can sue them if they pulled the scam on you. It's a question of how easy it will be to pursue and whether it's worth it or not. And I'm guessing that they probably set the amount of the scam to be where it's more than you ought to pay but less than what you'd sue over. But there you go. Crazy story, but they've now been indicted on federal charges of running this scam. And the scam is that they underbid, get your business, get your stuff, and call you back and go, oh, you owe us more money. And of course, the reason that you went with them in the first place is all those glowing five-star reviews they gave themselves. <laughs> so don't believe anything you see on the internet unless it comes from this channel. Neil, thanks for sending it. CBSnews.com ran it. Moving company that cost Chicago family virtually everything that they owned has been indicted on federal charges. Questions or comments? Put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Campers are nature's way of feeding mosquitoes.